Do you make her co-host, oh. Jason? You might yeah, have no, it's, it's, it's recording. recording. Okay. Joyce has done a lovely PowerPoint about our upcoming events. I will share. Can you send that to us in an email too? Yep, I will do that. I think I'm gonna, do, do you guys get the newsletter for the TOS? No? no? Okay, I'll put you on our mailing list as well. Oh, thank so. you so much. <laughs> then you'll get to read all my writings. That's, mm. I, what could be better? <laughs> <laughs> I my all my tyrannical writings. <laughs> Can you see my screen? Yes. Yep. Okay, so welcome. Um, our theme is honoring our native lands, exploring the sacredness of nature. And I think we've had plenty of time to greet each other. Did we miss Joan? Yeah. Okay. Did you yeah. Say yes. yes. Yes, they greeted yeah. me. Okay. Thank Hello. you. All right. Okay. Well, today, uh, today's program will be that first series of, of well, we have three of them, but the first of three webinar programs on the sacred unity we have with nature. Part two will be on May 1, is that still correct, Ananya? May yep, 1 May 1st. at 11 a.m. Central Time. And we'll focus on the original native lands we live on and teachings from the book Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer. Kimmerer? Kimmerer. And then part three is on June 12 at 11 a.m. Central, and we will discuss the extraordinary life of trees based on the work of Peter Wollaban, author of The Hidden Life of Trees. And Jason, I guess you're facilitating that one, correct? Both excellent books. Okay. Yeah. Excellent books. Robin is actually Herb's cousin. Yeah, I wasn't sure if oh. I was allowed to say that or not, so I kept quiet. But yeah, Robin Wall Kimmerer is Herb's cousin. So nice. And today's program, you know, we're we're talking a little about echo spirituality. I guess that's um, some of the newest words um, or terms being used. with kind of the melding of spiritu spirituality and ecology. If I eat this, they'll see it on right that and and there's just a lot of research about you know honoring the earth and being part of that and 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 feeling the essence can really help us in our spiritual uh transcendence as we move forward sacredness and gives us a larger perspective and and as we know as we're moving on the path how our our behaviors influence the echo environment around us as well as the people around us too. So we're just so glad you're going to be part of this um, series. We hope you'll continue with us. I have friends from England uh, already excited they, about it saying, oh, we're so glad you're doing this and your Theosophical Order Service is promoting uh, this importance of our relationship with nature. Very powerful. So I'm trying to watch the time to see we yep. have about a few minutes before Billy is going to come on, but the Theosophical uh, Society has had Billy as a national speaker on the Wednesday night meeting. I think she's been on about three or four times and then they always offer webinars. Well, through this past year of COVID, I've been in about, oh, I would say up to eight webinars that Billy has facilitated and I just love her high vibratory energy and, and the work that she does um, you know, for the people, for the sacred lands. And I will just wait till she comes on, but you can read her. Based in Evanston, Illinois. Mm -hmm. Yes. And has a healing center there. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Joyce, so she'll take questions after her presentation, correct? Um, yes. For, I think for a few minutes, yes. And mm. then after Billy um, finishes, we're gonna have, we'll just have a small discussion if there's any um, comments that anyone would like to say. But it looks like Billy has come on now. Welcome. 
Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Hey, hi, Billy. I'm I I have the honor of introducing you this morning. So Billy Topatate is the founder of MSI Wellness Center in Evanston, Illinois. She is Mescalero Apache and is dedicated to creating a sacred place, one person at a time, mm -hmm. through the indigenous native teachings of her teachers. Billy maintains a successful practice at her MSI center in Evanston, and with the express permission from her native culture, Billy shares many of the ancestral principles, healing systems, and native wisdoms with her students and clients. Billy has lectured and taught at Northwestern University, the Cancer Treatment Center of America, and more. Her work has been published by several magazines, and she is the author of several meditation recordings, as well as several recently published books. She is dedicated to being a service to anyone who's seeking wellness, mindfulness training, and spiritual growth. And Billy will share uh, some of her uh, publications after her talk, but I have several of her books and the book of sacred wisdom, the writings of a medicine woman has been very important to me this, this past year. So Billy, welcome. We are so glad that you can share your time with us today. Thank you so very much, Joyce. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here. And thank you for that wonderful introduction. Um, I thank you very much for your wonderful words. And I also say hello to all of you. Uh, I, I thank you very much for this wonderful time that we're sharing together. It's a pleasure and an honor for me to spend this time with you to celebrate um, a, wonderful, a wonderful opportunity to, to, to share some beautiful um, Native American indigenous uh, wisdom. You know, we have this beautiful tradition of, of sharing in, in, in an oral tradition, uh, we very rarely uh, write things down and that's the reason why I'm writing my books. I think it's very important for all of us to, to re reawaken this wonderful indigenous wellness that will help us um, to be on this wonderful mother earth and to enjoy our wonderful journey we call life. So before I start though, um, what I like to do is with all of our our teachings, you know, I know we're on Zoom and everything, but I'd like you to really imagine that we're sitting in what is called a teaching circle. A teaching circle, you'll notice in, in a lot of the indigenous uh, photographs of our ceremonies and our sharing time, that we sit in a circle. And there's a lot of reasons why we do that. The first reason is that the, the creator, the great spirit, um, works in beautiful circles of light. You'll see beautiful orbs and also our planets um, are shaped in circles and that is how the creator creates is this beautiful synergistic quality of the circle. So when we do teachings and sharings, we want to sit down in this beautiful teaching circle. So I'd like you to imagine that we're all sitting in this wonderful circle of life and we're sharing in that way um, to give and receive. Um, so that is really important. And I've got my smudging bowl here and I'm gonna create a beautiful sacred intention for our time together. And that is very important. We do a sunrise ceremony in the morning. I do it every morning. And then we have a sunset ceremony. There's, those two things are very important to us because it, sunrise and sunset if you looked at them, you wouldn't really know the difference because the sun is, is such a beautiful point um, on the horizon. And it really is a time when the creator gave us um, those two times in um, every day for us to remember our great purpose. And that is why many cultures during the sunset and sunrise do their prayer ceremonies and their, and their, their uh, intentions and it also helps us to adjust our energy field because um, in our tradition, we believe that our energy field is a gift from the creator, a navigating tool, um, a tool that has within it uh, not only um, a mechanism by which we uh, exchange energy with plants, animals, and people, but also to 
um, help us to navigate in the world. So our sacred intentions really help our energy field to help us to guide our journey during the course of the day. Also, I'm sure you know that there are a lot of other things in our energy field, but the purpose is for us to have that um, sunrise ceremony to create a sacred intention. And we're doing the sacred intention now to be able to uh, optimize the time that we have together. And I'm sure you know that uh, we do not walk this world by ourselves. We have our wonderful guides. We have our higher self. We have our teachers in spirit, our holy medicine people, and all the wonderful beings who assist us in good and loving ways are present for us at all times. So when we have a formal platform of creating a rapport with them, they acknowledge us and they, they guide us in such a beautiful and sacred way. And that is why we do this wonderful um, what's called a smudging and uh, there's different categories of smudging and in, in one of my books called the smudging ceremony there are 10 different ways we use smudging to create a sacred intention or in in other ways as well so but today we're going to use it to um, to create a beautiful intention for our session today this is my box where I have my ceremonial feather and one of and I'm just going to put this down. And uh, the, the feather is a very important tool for us. It was given to us by our winged brothers, our, the birds. And if you ever come to the center, we have this beautiful courtyard where all these birds are. They all say hello. They, they welcome all of the people that come to see us. And we, um, we're very honored to have them. Um, our, what we call Boyosh Baye. Uh, extended family members are very important to us in the animal kingdom. They guide us in such a wonderful way. It's a beautiful story that uh, the, the great spirit put all these beautiful um, animals and plants and within the structure of Mother Earth to really help us. Um, they're the ones that have already achieved their great purpose. We're the only ones that haven't really done that yet. And we are in the process of achieving our great purpose on this wonderful Mother Earth. And they are part of, um, for, for the lack of words, our, um, our totems, our helpers, to help us to remind us about that. So the reason why we use a feather in the smudging ceremony is so that we can always uh, look at the situation from a better perspective, a vibration that's closer to the creator. Um, our elders speak um, to the creator and also to our, um, our spirit guides and helpers through what is called enlightened language. In other words, language is much more of a vibrational state and close and uh, uh, proximity and, and, and frequency to the great uh, spirit. And we'll talk a little bit about that today. So um, you'll notice there's some beadwork on it. The beadwork is, is, is number one, a functional thing. It, it holds the the, uh, the, the feather in such a good way. But then we have some fringe at the end. The fringe represents Tate, the wind. That is uh, my name, Four Winds, uh, Popa Tate. Um, and uh, Four Winds, um, you know, it represents, uh, that's my totem. My totem is the wind. And also my Apache name is Wazayata. Wazayata, wind that sings. And uh, that's what it says. You know, it says, I speak... I use words as medicine, um, and that's my great purpose. So um, with this and our smudging, we're going to uh, create a wonderful intention for this uh, wonderful gathering we have today. So I'm going to light this for you. Oh, wonderful creator, thank you so very much for this beautiful day. Thank you for this sacred way of praying. Thank you for this wonderful journey we call life. We invoke for our higher self, our virtuous teachers and spirit, our holy medicine people, and all the wonderful beings who assist us in good and loving ways. We thank you very much for your wonderful wisdom, your great guidance, your virtuous mentorship. We invoke for your wonderful presence, your beautiful healing energies to guide this wonderful session today with your wonderful wisdom about this wonderful Mother Earth, all the worlds that are here, 
and also celebrating Earth Day at home with Akwiasen. So I'm going to snatch all of you. Oh, yeah. So let me start by saying that um, I'm so glad that we're spending this time together. Time is a gift from the creator that allows us to engage in the moment, but also with all the other worlds. What do I mean by all the worlds? Well, According to our stories, our, and I'm, by the way, I'm Mescalero Apache, and I will be making reference to uh, the indigenous training that I received uh, as a Apache elder. Um, so, you know, I just had a birthday where I turned 69, and one more year I'll be 70, and it's just like, okay, time's going by very quickly. So I really want to share this time to really kind of talk a little bit about um, you know, the, uh, the indigenous training that isn't in any books, and also the, the wisdom that, you know, that my elders have given me. So I'm going to talk in reference to this beautiful celebration of Mother Earth and Earth Day um, by first of all talking about what we call the Green Nation. The Green Nation is very important to us. Um, the Green Nation are the trees and the, also the plants. And they are very important because without them, we would not survive on this beautiful planet. Um, when I was walking um, in the desert in Arizona, that's where my land is, that's where my, my family is from, with Mama Little Wolf and Papa Little Wolf. I was a very young girl walking in the desert, but it was very wonderful, you know. Um, as an Apache person, we love the desert, you know, we thrive in the desert, but it is a very, very intense place with the sun and all of that gets pretty hot out there. Um, but as the sun goes down, I used to remember um, my mother and father stopping for a moment. And I was just very, maybe about four or five years old. And when the sun was going down, they would look at the sun and they would make a prayer. And because they knew that sunrise and sunset was a very important time. And they told me that, and you know, when I was a little girl, I was just playing this in the, in the, in the dirt and everything, kicking it around. And all of a sudden I would feel this beautiful presence, this energy that was coming from my mother and father. And I looked and they were stopping for a moment to um, do their sunset ceremony. And their sunset ceremony was very simple in the sense that they would go inward. We believe that when we close our eyes, we are going into the energy world, the, the spirit world. And when we do meditation, that is also true. Um, so when we close our eyes, we're going into our, what we call our spirit medicine, the center of who we are. And sometimes when we are in difficult places, we also do that because there is a part of us that knows that we are pure spirit. Yes, we have these physical bodies and it's very important to acknowledge that because our physical bodies take us in different places and experience this world in such a different way. So when we would do the uh, sunset ceremony, it would be um, about uh, acknowledging the day and also acknowledging the guidance that we received. You see, when we suker onto um, our higher self and our, our guides and, and the world, the world sukers onto us. In other words, yes, Mother Earth will give us the medicine it has, um, but when we suker onto it and we honor it and we acknowledge it and we, we experience it in a different way, uh, the medicine, the natural medicine that can come from plants and, and water and, and the mountains is much more profound. And uh, I'm going to talk about the Green Nation in a little bit, but I do want to talk about all the worlds that are here. Uh, there are two things that we believe in the Native tradition. 
um, the, the kingdoms. There are all these beautiful kingdoms on this planet. The human kingdom, the animal kingdom, the plant kingdom, the water kingdom, uh, the crystal kingdom, the spirit kingdom. There are all these kingdoms and they inter, inter, um, lock together. We are all one, Goyoshbaye. And uh, so we are all this, uh, this interwoven energy for a wonderful reason. As a medicine woman, I work with the natural world all the time. It's a very powerful and wonderful world. And it has a lot of gifts and beautiful stories, um, how it got created and why it's here. But to support the human kingdom and its wonderful awareness that this natural world, the essence of the medicine in the natural world, is present and, and has been for a very long time. So, and we talk about the kingdoms, but we also talk about the worlds. So there is the world of the sky, there is the world of the water, there is the world of the mountains, there the world of the forest. And if you can just imagine sitting on the ledge, looking out, seeing this wonderful, beautiful lake, and these beautiful trees in the forest and the sky. And if you could just think about that and how we experience it. My, my grandfather used to say, when we are in the midst of those worlds touching each other, we can experience the creator in such a powerful way. And you can, you know that because if you're out in nature and you're looking at these powerful mountains and you're looking at the trees and the sky and the water, it actually resets your breath and it changes your thoughts. It allows your thoughts to be more expansive, to know that you are part of something very good, very powerful and beyond the wisdom that we could ever have. But we strive for that wisdom because we express a desire to know we are all wisdom seekers. We call all of those kingdoms Doyoshpaye. Doyoshpaye means extended family members that are highly evolved, more than we can ever imagine. Um, all of those systems are always given to us in such a profound way. I mean, you can take a little stone from a, from a mountain and when you wet it and smell it, it's like you're smelling that entire mountain and the essence of that, that fragrance. It's the same thing with the green nation. The green nation are the trees and, and the plants and the medicine of all those things. Um, the, the stories that we have about them is just wonderful, how they interacted with us. You know, in the beginning of our, our, of our existence as people, um, the, the creator gave us a name. The Apache people are known uh, by the name Nede. Nede means earth people. We are of the earth and we were learning how to be stewards of the world, of the, of the earth. We knew about a lot of things uh, because we were taught by uh, not the creator, but the creator's teachers. The creators uh, sent teachers and the teachers were angels. They were, they are written uh, all over our canyons in petroglyphs. Um, there is a, a wonderful petroglyph in the, in the canyons um, in Arizona. And um, you can see the, the, the angels' wings teach, and these beautiful beings teaching our elders and our elders teaching um, our, our uh, tribal people different kinds of things about the world. So it's really wonderful that we were able to learn. And we're not the only ones. We know that, um, that all cultures experience some training from these beautiful teachers um, who were very evolved and helped us to understand the different aspects of the world. But we know that the mountains um, are very evolved elders who decided to, um, to allow for their beautiful spirit to be in the mountains, to emanate this beautiful energy. Uh, and I'm, not, I'm sure that, you know, whenever you've climbed a mountain, you experience that beautiful energy, that profound energy of peace and tranquility and also a great oneness. So that's the emanations of those beautiful energies of the, of the mountains. But the Green Nation, there's so many aspects 
um, so many beautiful stories about that. And um, so we use, uh, you know, the way that nature provides insight about healing. Um, and we look at that and we extract that wonderful information to allow for healing for ourselves, not just in a spiritual way, but in a physical way. So the plants provide us with not only sustenance in food and healing medicine, but also in ceremony, because we, as I'm sure you know, I just used what we call the four sacreds um, in our smudging. Um, and there's different kinds of, of herbs that we have learned to use to cleanse our energy field, to cleanse our mind, to cleanse our, our homes, but also to send blessings to people that need it. All of those. So the, the Green Nation provides us not just um, spiritual aspects, of, of uh, healing, but also physical aspects. Um, for example, you know, um, the non-poisonous um, sumac tree, you know, the berries, we, we use those berries to uh, for, we cook them and just extract the oil and put them in our hair to have all this beautiful hair because it really helps us to, to, to have an abundance of this wonderful vibrant hair. Um, so the plants can give us all kinds of wonderful uh, healing energies, like, for example, the sap, the resin, is the immune system of the tree. And um, it gives us, and I remember I was in Arizona recently with my wonderful husband. We were recording one of my meditations in the caverns, and he was, he was standing under this uh, wonderful uh, juniper tree. It was a mother juniper tree and you always can tell it's the mother because she has the berries and um and so he looked up at the tree and he said you know i have a little scratch here can you help me out <laughs> and the tree actually dropped um uh, some wonderful um sap onto his hand which i thought was very very wonderful so he grabbed it and he goes what do i do with this i said put it on the scratch that's what she wants you to do so he put it on his scratch and he said, wow, this smells so wonderful. And I said, that is part of the immune system of the tree and it's helping you. And so it's just, it was a wonderful connection. And I, um, he, he just, he was just very, very um, impressed that, uh, that the tree would interact with him that way. But trees often do, you know, um, I, I talk about that in one of my books called The Smudging Ceremony, about how the trees interact with us and how they speak to us and how they help us. They're always trying to help. That's what their goal is. So, um, so the tree nation is not only providing us oxygen, which is really important for our existence, but also can give us some beautiful medicines that we can use for our, not only our physical body, but our ceremonies as well, which is really wonderful. I mean, if you can see the energy in any way, shape or form, and when we use our ceremonies, it actually helps to bring more of that very, very powerful light into our energy field. So, and I'm gonna go back to when I was a little girl, uh, and we were in the midst of all these worlds. I sat, um, you know, on the ledge of a wonderful mountain and looked out um, and saw the Father Sky. And, you know, Father Sky is there to uh, the clouds are the symbolic representation of ultimate potentiality. If, you know, if you ever sit under, and we used to have um, uh, cloud readers, they would look at the clouds and kind of read them for us and tell us a little bit about what they wanted to communicate to us. But they are ultimate potentially. They are the balance of energy. And we would allow for them to move through us and around us to balance our energy field and cleanse us. And they are very, very uh, good about that. It's really great. But when you sit in those worlds where they connect um, to each other, it is a very powerful experience uh, of, of peace and what we call the natural medicine of the world. Um, and I'm sure you know that when we had the shelter in place, one of the first things that we naturally wanted to do was get out in nature. And, and I'm sure a lot of people 
didn't really understand why their urgency was there, but our mind and our body and our spirit really thrive in the natural elements of the, na we call it natural medicine. And that's, we, um, we, we are very connected to all of the different kingdoms because we know that we can thrive in that way um, of being in this natural world. Um, and also that the plants um, can speak to us. You know, in the beginning when we were learning how to become stewards of the land, um, we were uh, in a connection uh, with all of those different elements of the world, of the natural world, and gained a lot of insight as to what herbs were good for us as healing, as food, and, and for ceremony, because the plants talk to us and tell us that. And when we get to a place in our journey, all of us, when we can connect with and honor um, all of the aspects of the natural world, you, you're, the language that they use to speak to us is the language that is universal across the board. And it is an energy exchange. The energy exchange between a plant and a human being is present all the time. As we start to connect with them and acknowledge them as another fellow extended family member, they will speak to you profoundly, and I will. I will. Um, I'll give you. I'll give you a little homework so you can find that out for yourself. What I would like you to do is, I would like you to go to a tree that is close to you, so you would see it on a daily basis. When you uh, step up to the tree, ask permission to step into its energy field. Just. Say, may I step into your energy field? And you will get a soft acknowledgement, of course. When you step into the energy field of a tree, you speak your name. You say, my name is Billy Papatate, Wazayata, when that sings. What is your name? And when you ask for the uh, tree's name, it will give it to you in your mind. And acknowledge that and say, I, I heard your name, and I would like to become um, a friend. So when you acknowledge that, then every once in a while, you want to give, give the tree some water, um, place your hand on the tree to acknowledge the tree, and ask for something. You know, like my husband said, you know, I have a scratch here. Can you do anything about this? And he, he was just, he was just joking. But he really, what he realized was that the tree was a living system that acknowledged him. And this is your way of beginning that conversation. Now, the next thing that's very important is we can sit by the tree and experience a stillness. And when we experience that stillness, we'll start becoming aware of medicine of that tree and the story of that tree. I remember uh, you know, teaching a class and then going by the water and walking by the water. And as I was walking by the water, I heard, um, I heard my name, Billy Topatate. And I turned and I saw this very old tree. And I said, you know my name. And I, and I looked and I said, um, what's your name? And he told me his name and I said, well, you know, it's interesting because trees that usually are with lots of family, you're by yourself here, you know, uh, where's your family? And uh, he said, or he showed me pictures um, that they were cutting down the trees uh, next to him. And I turned to him and I said, I'm sorry that you lost your family. However, the important thing is that you are here. And I am grateful that you are. And it was, he said, they had so much more to give. And I said, yes, and they will be back. And uh, so we became friends. 
and he's given me uh, branches to make my dream catchers. He's given me resin to use in ceremony. Um, just a wonderful, a wonderful uh, relationship. And all my trees in the courtyard are all, they all send blessings to me. I send blessings to them. It's a, it's a wonderful way to live. So, I, and so I would like you to think about in, engaging and with your natural environment that feeds not only your spirit, but also your energy field. We use a lot of the, the, the knowledge from the green nation to allow for our energy to thrive, you know, to, to live. And that's what the creator wants us to do is to uh, learn how to navigate not only our journey, but engage in the journeys of others. And that includes the natural world, whether it's the mountains, the trees, the water, um, you know, the sky, uh, the fire, uh, the crystals, the angels, our divine helpers, our spirit guides, you know, they're all there. Um, and again, I use the ter term super, we super unto them, they super unto us. You know, and, and the medicine is always there. So, you know, I'm, this is water. <clears throat> we know water to be a very, well, one of the 12 sacred foods on the planet. It has been on this planet since its existence. This is the same water, the same water that's been here for centuries. And we call this a coveted plane. In other words, um, this water has been here since the beginning of time. And it has, it has, the, it has a spirit and it cleanses itself. It travels through time and space. It evaporates and goes into the environment of the aura of the earth. It is nourished and brought back into the, the sacred grounds of, of the earth. And then we drink it. And so this is one of 12 uh, foods on the planet. And so it's really important for us. You notice I have, you know, um, some rose quartz in, not in the water, but in a, in a glass container in the water because the, the, the crystal kingdom um, has its own function. And I'm writing a book right now called The um, uh, Crystals for the Medicine Women it, and also for Medicine Men because we have used the crystal kingdom for many, many, many centuries. We know exactly what to use them for. And for this, I, I use this for um, really um, blessing the water, um, but it's not in the water, it's in a glass that's emanating this energy. But to bring um, more power into this water um, is to set an intention in our food and in our water. You know, so when we when we energize this water and other people energize things for us too. For example, this water will nourish me. But maybe, you know, I would ask, you know, in my class, I would say to a person, would you be so kind as to get me some water? Well, they would get me the water. And but when they when they're securing the water for me, their thoughts are, she was really nice. She asked me to give her this water. And I really appreciate taking the time to help her get this water. While they're energizing that natural element and putting their medicine into the water for me. And, you know, just on the opposite end, if I was to say, hey, you go get me that water, that person would go get me the water, but they wouldn't be putting that kind of medicine into the water. So you see, we navigate our energy intentions with the natural world all the time. And we're impacting that engaging energy. Um, for one purpose, we're learning. We're learning about who we are and what we can do and how we can navigate energy. My teacher used to say, when, when we're on the earth, we're learning how to move energy through us. Also different qualities of energy. And this adds to the creation of this world. But also, when we're on the other side in the spirit world, that's all we are is energy. So we're learning so much here. You know, we, we have this great opportunity. 
to learn from the other kingdoms and also learn from the natural world, that there is this essence of medicine uh, that we can engage in and allow it to heal us. You know, as a, nat as a native um, medicine woman, I work with the natural world all the time and I love it. And I, I work with the, you know, uh, the animals and the plants and they have a lot of medicine to give us. And also mountains, you know, when I was recording uh, my meditation, one of my meditations recently in the caverns of, um, uh, you know, the mountains, I would, uh, you know, engage with the, with the animals and, and, and all of that because I wanted I wanted to encourage them to come and be part of the recording. And, and they loved it. They were like, what are you doing here? You know, and I'm recording some um, medicine for other people. Okay, we want to be part of that. So they would sit, even we have this little, we have this little dog that we have at the center. And whenever I teach a class, he comes from the office and he sits right in front of me. And he sits there like, I'm listening. You can talk, I'm here. You know, and uh, while I'm on Zoom, it's just really hard. It's a little distracting sometimes because he's so present, but very, very sweet and really speaks volumes about the natural understanding between all the kingdoms. So when you work with your, with your enlightenment, um, you will start noticing a very profound and powerful connection that you have with all the worlds that are here, even the spirit world. Your spirit guides are very important, and they're not only in the natural world, but they and they love the trees. They love the they love the plants. You know, when I work with um, the plants um, to make medicine and to allow for their spirit to touch um, the medicine of the, uh, that comes from uh, you know the salves that I use or the tinctures or whatever I'm doing, um, it really is a very powerful and wonderful tool. Um, because it carries the essence of the creator. And, you know, we have this inner light that engages with all the light that and energy that is around us, um, which is very powerful. And that is called essence, the essence of the natural world's medicine. Uh, but it's very, very, very important and very profound. Um, and I think this is the time when we have a little bit of time for questions. And, and if you have any, um, you can raise your hand. You can unmute, Anne. Yes, I've, I've muted everybody when you were talking, so okay. they'll have to unmute themselves to ask questions. All right. Yeah, you, you were saying that um, the plants give us something. Do we give the plants anything? Do we give the spirit world anything? Do we give the trees, the green nation anything? Yes. Um, a long time ago, we would give something called kanikanik. Kanikanik is, is a version of tobacco and put it down and we would ask, we would ask for, you know, um, a prayer or, or, or a establishment of rapport or an establishment of friendship. But what I would recommend is you, you give water, you know, you just give a little water before you're actually going to engage um, so that you're making an offering. Um, also, the power of acknowledgement. The power of acknowledgement is a very powerful tool. What it does is it allows for a, a connection to occur. So when we acknowledge uh, a plant or we acknowledge an animal at that spirit level, you know, spirit to spirit, your spirit acknowledges their spirit. It's a very powerful tool. And um, they love that just like we would, we like being acknowledged. When we're acknowledged, you know, our aura starts to expand and thrive. Theirs does too. Acknowledging them, protecting them. And when I say protection, I'm saying the biggest gift we can give anyone is education. Uh, when we are helping others to learn, um, and I'm not saying that we shove it down people's throats, what I'm saying is that we, we learn how to express um, the importance of the natural world um, in a way that's engaging, a way that uh, speaks to their spirit so it wakes them up. And, and they start to, through their experiences, learn that truly 
that the, um, the, the, the kingdoms I spoke about are their brothers. You know, they're what we call Toyoshvaye, you know, our, our extended family members. We do ceremony in our Anipi ceremony, and that's the sweat lodge. And in the center is a pit where we put these heated rocks. They come from the river, and then we put them in the fire, ceremonial fire. And then we bring them into the lodge, and we put sacreds on them, like sweet grass and, and sage, and, and we put water. And there, they, there's a reason why we do that. Um, the, the rocks are the oldest family members on the planet. They have seen everything. They have seen so much. And in the lodge, they're sharing their stories with us. And so that helps us to, to learn where we have, uh, where we came from. And also to give us, give us great wisdom um, that we need uh, during our ceremony. Yes, Joyce. Hi, can, would you speak to your your beautiful uh, native lands and your your pilgrimages and your your purpose of doing the, your pilgrimages? So my native land is Arizona, and uh, I, I have um, you know land uh, you know not far from in between uh, the Grand Canyon and Sedona, and um, I I go to Sedona a lot because that is a place where. Uh, the native people have gone for centuries to um, to kind of like on retreat. The different tribes would go there, and the medicine men would be in the at the highest levels of those particular canyons. Uh, Hanaki and um, uh, Hanaki was one, and um, so there's beautiful petroglyphs there. That there's a ledge where you could see. Um, all the chakras, all the energy centers, and then at the top, there's a beautiful beam of light that the medicine men would stand on that ledge and receive attunements from their divine helpers. And that's on the that's on the ledge. That's on the, that's the petroglyphs. It's centuries old. And behind that was a beautiful beam of light that really re represents uh, one of our teachers who, you know, helped us in the. Um, in the energy world so it's a beautiful and i would go there i i would go there every year with my mother and i still go there um to sing songs and make prayers and i do have a, a photograph where there was a beautiful medicine man who would bless us every year and say even after death you come here and make a prayer and i will send you a blessing so every year and even uh, this this past this year, um, I have gone there, and of course he has passed. But they have it, you know, barricaded because it's a very special place. And and whenever I go there to make a prayer, um, I make a prayer for my family. And there's these beautiful spheres of light that manifest, and we photographed them. And uh, they're just listening to he's he's sending a prayer. He's made a commitment, and he's sending a prayer. But then all the plants there are so so awake and so alive and it's just wonderful. And the mountains really help us to stay really in that sacred place. So, um, you know, the pilgrimages there are so wonderful. And, and of course, anyone that goes there would experience that beautiful feeling. Um, and um, did I, I'm sorry, did I go over the time? Hello, can I just say something? Jumbo, I'm originally from Tanzania, East Africa, and that's the beautiful land of the Maasai's. If you've ever heard of, you've heard of the Serengeti and the Northern region, the beautiful. So as you were talking to me and to all of us, I just felt so one with what you were saying, so connected as if I'm connected back to Mother Earth. I'm currently in India, but you know, a lot of the Maasai's there, have this tradition where they can walk along the land and kind of sense the energy in the land. So I just wanted to ask you that this seems to be a very universal phenomena. If you're connected to nature, then you naturally feel that connection to the earth. Yes. So people like us who stay in urban lands and urban cities and, and places like that, 
uh, is there anything that we could study to kind of get closer to connecting to earth and finding out what kind of land is stressed or what kind of land has better energy because it's so beautiful what you said i'm mesmerized thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with us and thank you ananya and jason for bringing her on thank you very much very very blessed yes and it is very universal because we all are our all are related you know yes. we all are related and so we're all connected and we're all connected to this beautiful mother earth and uh, how you get connected even more is by engaging with with the natural world in my book you know um the smudging ceremony i talk a lot about how to connect with with the earth and everything it's not just about the smudging so that's a really wonderful book and the one that joyce talked about which was you know this one the writings of a medicine woman this talks about how the native people connect with um words that help us connect with resolving things so but i do i i know there's so much more that we can talk about but i, I do want to do a little bit of drumming for you if that's okay so i am going to and you'll notice the apache drums have dream catchers in them uh, that's very very powerful for us and what i'm going to do is i'm going to ask for all of you to just Get connected to your spirit medicine in your heart. Come into the center of who you are. And I'm going to do this song. And the song is a ceremonial song about um, being in gratitude for allowing for this wonderful time to, to be uh, together uh, and engage and also to enlighten ourselves. so very much for being with me today it's a pleasure and an honor to meet you um, my heart sings to see you and to spend this time with you i thank joyce for bringing me on and all the other team members for supporting this beautiful work and continue um, to please follow your wonderful virtuous light it will get you to a sacred place a home of acquiescence thank you so much well, thank you, Billy, for sharing your knowledge that has come from your experiences, your prayers, and your sharing your blessings with us and being the respected teacher, healer, and advocate of earth-friendly endeavors. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Megwitch, -bye. Billy. Megwitch. Oh. <laughs> McWitch, that was wonderful. Oh, McWitch for being here. Mm. Herb had to leave, I apologize. He, he's he got a blessing ceremony that he's working on next week. So he's going out to connect 